This is R.D. Sharma Solution Class 12th Chapter 14 Differentials, Errors and Approximation Exercises 14.1 In order to use the differentials for errors and approximation, there are certain things we need to understand. The first thing is dy by dx that we have been talking about is the differentiation and this is just a symbol. It is not we are dividing dy by dx. These are no no two separate entities. They are single. dy by dx is just a symbolic way to represent. And how did we get this? When we said delta, delta y by delta x that is change in y, y2 minus y1 and change in x that is x2 minus x1. So when you make a graph like this and one point is x1 y1, the other point is your x2 y2. So the slope that is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 that is the change in y divided by the change in x the change is called delta. What is was the change? So when delta x tends to 0, this becomes delta y by delta x becomes dy by dx. So when dy is assumed or considered as a different entity and dx is, is a cons considered as a different entity, then how are we going to use it for the errors and approximation? For example, we have a function y equals fx. Y equals to fx is a function, normal function. Now, delta x is the change in x. So, in order to find out the corresponding change in y, that is, delta x is x2 minus x1. And the difference is very, very small. That is, the change in x is very, very small. So, what will be the change in cor corresponding y? So, this, that delta y will be y2 minus y1, right? So, delta y by delta x, when the delta x is very very less, that is limit delta x tends to 0, the change in delta x is quite small, then we call it as dy by dx and that we were saying it as f dash x or y prime or y double prime, that is the differentiation, alright. Now, this f dash x, when we have a relationship like this, delta y delta x, dy dx and f dash x. So delta y by delta x is nothing but f dash x and when it is dy by dx then there is a change. So whenever we write delta y by delta x we have to add a very small element very minute which is very so less that it tends to zero. Alright delta x tends to zero that is why we were saying that the change can be written as dy by dx. So when we are talking about delta y by delta x when you have when you want to imp say it as f dash x or differentiation then you have to add a very small element that is this epsilon this epsilon is so small that it is tending to zero so now we can write it as delta y i'm multiplying delta x cross multiplying on the right hand side so f dash x into delta x into epsilon into delta x epsilon is a very small small like zero so this epsilon is so zero that this this can be disregarded or it can be eliminated or ignored so delta y becomes equals to f dash x into delta x but as our discussion started i told you that dy by dx is nothing but f dash x so in place of f dash x we can write it as delta y is equal to f dash x into delta x in place of f dash x you can write dy by dx so this is the whole scenario that is if you know the change in x then there is a change in y and that change in y is delta y and that can be computed by dy by dx. All right. This is the whole scenario of errors and approximation. Now, there are certain terms. There are certain terms that is very small change. We call it as absolute error. So, delta x, very small change, absolute error. All right. So, for x, delta x is an absolute error. Then comes the relative error. So, delta x, again a change for x. When we divide this with the actual x, we call it as a relative error. There is one more term that is percentage error this percentage error is nothing but when we are talking about the change in x for x delta x by x was a relative error when you multiply it by 100 this becomes the percentage error so how are we going to solve there has to be some algorithm so that algorithm we are going to see whenever we have some independent variable that is the value which you give and it is independent of, of any other thing like y equals to fx is the function x for every x value, there will be corresponding y value. So x is a independent value, y is a dependent value. So for every x, the first step for the initial value when we start, this x, we start with x and we say that there is a change. What is the change? Delta x. So this x plus delta x, because the change is delta x, so x plus delta x is the actual change. For example, there is an object and when you heat it up, it will expand. So there will be a slight expansion that is delta x. 
So final will be what? X plus delta X. That is the size of after heating will be X plus delta X. So in order to get this delta X, because I'll because ultimately we have to find delta y. So this delta x has to be assumed equal to dx. All right. dx and delta x has to be assumed equal. Now dy by dx has to be computed. You already have a function y equals, y equals fx. Now you have to differentiate. So y equals to fx is there. First you find out the differential. For example, y is equal to x square. The differentiation will be 2x. That is the third step. Now the fourth step is what because dy by dx has already been computed but if we are finding things at x and y so we'll find the dy by dx at x it equal to whatever the value means means we'll find out the value at x which is given in the question the next thing will be because we have to find out delta y right so for that we'll take dy and we'll again make it equivalent to delta y so dy by dx can be written as dy by dx is equal to dy by dx but as we have assumed dy as delta y, dx as delta x. So now you can write this as delta y is equivalent to delta d is dy. And the change in y, that is the delta y, because started with change in x, try to find delta y. So delta y will be equal to dy by dx into delta x. Because in this error and approximation, we have assumed that delta x is equal to dx and delta y is equal to dy all right so this is the question where we will prove this algorithm also we have a function y equals to x square if x is equal to 10 delta x is equal to 0 0.1 find delta y so if you understand this very well you will be able to solve all the questions because they come in your examination this is a very important topic so y is equal to x square is the function the change in x is 0 0.1 so x2 minus x1 is 0 0.1 so delta x is what? 0 0.1. And it is also given at x equals to 10. x starting value of x is 10. The change is 0 0.1. And then we have to find out dy by dx. So we already have a function x square. When we find out the dy by dx, it is 2x. Now we have to find out dy by dx at initial value of x. What is the initial value of x? It is 10. So as I said, you have to find this dy by dx at x equal to 10 or the value which is given as x. So we will find out dy by dx as at x equals to 10. So it will be 2 into 10. 2 into x. That is 2 into 10. It is 20. So we have found out dy by dx 20. And we know the procedure delta y will be equal to dy by dx into delta x. So now we have the value of dy by dx. We have the value of delta x. Just put in here in order to find out the corresponding change in y which is delta y. So delta y is going to be dy by dx was 20. Delta x is already given in the question 0 0.1. So this is going to be 2. So this is how if the change in x is given, the change in y can be found out using the function using our differentials. This is the errors and approximation. If y is equal to sine x and x changes from pi by 2 to 22 by 14, what is the approximate change in y? So we have x initial value is pi by 2. All right. Then we have the change. So when you it changes and when you add delta x with x it becomes 22 by 40 so x plus delta x is 22 by 40 no problem so what is dx we have assumed it to be equal to delta x for errors and approximation basically delta y by delta x is nothing but dy by dx when delta x tends to zero when delta x tends to zero we already regarded it as dy by dx so dx is delta x in this case so dx is delta x. what is delta x from here you can take x on the right hand side it is already given it is pi by 2. So delta x is 22 by 14 minus x. So delta x is 22 by 14 minus what is x? It is initially pi by 2. So 22 by 14 minus pi by 2. Pi is nothing but 22 by 7. So it is 22 by 7 and 7 there is a 2 in the denominator also. So it is it is 22 by 14. So 22 by 14 minus 22 by 14. It is 0. So delta x is equal to 0. Delta x is 0. Now let us come to the function y is equal to sin x so first we have to do the differentiation that is dy by dx now differentiate sin x is cos x now we have to find out the value of dy by dx at initial value of x what is the initial value of x pi by 2 so cos pi by 2 you have to find out what is cos pi by 2 cos 90 degrees 0 so it is 0 and now coming to the final conclusion delta y is dy by dx into delta x from here you can find out that also. So it is dy by dx into delta x. dy by dx at x equals to pi by 2 is 0. Delta x is 0. 
zero into zero is zero so delta y is zero so there is no change in the value of y so you can write it like this also the radius of a sphere shrinks from 10 to 9.8 so it is coming down find approximately the decrease in its volume decrease in its volume so first thing you need to know what is the volume of the sphere the surface area of the sphere all these things you need to know volume is 4 by 3 pi r the surface area is 4 pi r square whatever it will be used it, it is not in this question but maybe when it will be used in the near later questions so radius is decreasing the initial is 10 when you add delta a x it will be 9.8 you can start with x you can call it as r it's up to you okay i'll start with x and i'll later change it in, into r x is 10 x plus delta x is what 9.8 so delta x will be what x and r i'll change and use uh, as the same way so delta x can be computed as 9.8 minus 10 but you don't have to use a negative one please just assume because the question is asking approximately the decrease in volume so we know we are talking about decrement so we don't have to use negative because we're calling it as shrink we are calling it, it as decrease we don't have to use a negative sign so this don't have to write this negative okay so delta x is now computed what about volume you have to differentiate it 4 by 3 pi r cube just differentiate it dv by dr is going to be equal to you can call it as dx also it's up to you so dv by dr it will make it easier dv by dr is going to be equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube will be 3 r square this they cancel 4 pi r square so dv by dr at r equals to initial value that is 10 you have to compute 4 into pi into this is 10 so 10 square 400 into pi centimeter because it is volume volume divided by uh, r so it will be centimeter square only next thing will be in order to find out delta a x delta y we have to use dy by dx into delta x so just use this so in order to find out delta y this is here we in this case delta y is dv delta x is dr same thing so dv by dr we have computed it is 400 pi and delta r also we have computed it is 0 0.2 and when you multiply this is going to be 80 pi centimeter cube a circular metal plate expands under heating so that its radius increase by k percent so this is a circular plate and this is increasing k percent find the approximate increase in the area of the plate if the radius of the plate before heating is 10 centimeters so now you know the concept here we are introducing a new concept which is the relative error so x was initially x then something was get added delta x was added and the final value will be x plus delta x but this x is radius we have started with x is equals to radius in this question and we are talking about increase in the area so y assume it to be area y is area x is radius so what is the relationship the circular metal plate expands under heating so that its radius increases by k percent now we have to introduce a concept that we have discussed already that is the error predict, prediction of error area is already pi r square and since we have assumed a radius as x you can call it as pi x square so area is directly proportional to radius of square square of radius so as radius will increase the area will increase so y you have this y equals pi x square call it as x square now there is an increase by k percent and i told you that the percentage error is nothing but delta x by x into 100 or in this case delta r by r into 100 same thing so delta x by x into 100 is given in this question as k percent so just call it as k all right so if radius is 10 centimeter what will be delta x x is 10 so multiply this k into 10 divided by 100 so it will be 0 0 you can cancel k by 10 so this is your delta x and this y is pi x squared so first we have to find out dy by dx so dy by dx is pi and i'm differentiating this one pi into x squared will be 2x so 2 pi x it will dy by dx now we have to find out the value of dy by dx at x equals to 10 which is given in the question so x equals to 10 is 2 into pi into 10 that is 20 pi how about delta y delta y is dy by dx into delta x so that is going to be equal to dy by dx 20 pi just write it delta x is what it's k by 10 write it here k by 10 this get cancelled you have 2 pi k so this is 2 k pi or 2 pi k centimeter square so the approximate change in the area of the plate when the increment in the radius is k percent is 2 k pi or 2 
पाई की एक सेंटीमीटर फाइन दी परसेंटेज एरर इन कैलकुलेटिंग द सरफेस एरिया ऑफ अ क्यूबिकल बॉक्स इफ एन एरर ऑफ वन परसेंट इज मेड इन मेजरिंग देंस of edges of the cube so we have a cube cube is a 3d shape in which all the edges are of equal length so there is some error in in calculating the surface area okay if there is a 1% error in computing the length of the edge so whatever is length 1% was the error so what is the error in surface area we'll use the concept of errors in approximation of differentials so please assume the surface area of and you know it surface area of a cube is 6x square if you assume the edge is x the surface area is 6x square but we are not using the actual value we are trying to find out x because y or you can say the surface area is 6x square you can call it as surface area is directly proportional to x square which is the edge square this is the actual value you already know that but we are talking about y is equal, is directly proportional to x square proportionality is important because they, that will comprehend the changes so y is surface area what is x is the edge we are assuming and y is equal to x square y is directly proportional to x square there is a one percentage error what is the side we have taken x so delta x by x into 100 is given as 1% is equal to 1 right so here we have to say dx is equal to delta x and dy is equal to delta y that we already know so in order to find out delta x let let it be like that in place of dy by dx we have to differentiate x square is 2x so delta y will be what dy by dx into delta x so dy by dx is already 2x with us delta y is dy by dx is 2x what is delta x from here this goes up this goes down x by 100 from here so x by 100 dy by dx we have taken 2x and this one delta x we have taken from this one 100 x by 100 so delta y is 2x square by 100 what is y y is already x square as i told you is directly proportional but you can call it as x square so 2y by 100 so delta y now you can bring this y down because you have to find out the percentage error in y so it is 2 by 100 delta y by y as there is a change percentage error in delta x similarly the percentage change in y is delta y by y into 100 so you can just bring this 100 here you multiply both sides by 100 you will on the left hand side you will get the percentage error in calculation of surface area which is delta y by y into 100 on the right you will get 2 so the final thing is the percentage error in calculating the surface area is 2 in this case all right when the error in computing the edge is 1% if there is an error of 0.1% in the measurement of radius of a sphere find this is the sphere we are talking about find approximately the percentage error in the calculation of the volume of the sphere now this r is x we are assuming radius and volume we are assuming as y now the question is saying delta x by x into 100 that is the percentage error in the radius is 0.1 now you know that delta x we have to equate it or is nearly equal to dx delta y is nearly equal to dy so dx by x into 100 100 let us take it in the denominator it's 1 by 1000 because 0.1 is 1 by 10 so dx by x is 1 by 10000 or oh, 1000 okay now we have y equals 4 by 3 pi r cube that is pi x cube let us take dy by dx here what do we get this is 4 pi x square then this is 4 by 3 pi r cube so x cube when you differentiate 3 3 gets cancelled 4 pi x square will come now dx by x now let us bring it here dx and this is if you are introducing x we have to have x in the numerator so x cube i am writing because we have introduced this x by itself now if you divide it by 3 you have to multiply it by 3 why i did this because 4 by 3 pi r cube or pi x cube is y so this y you can bring down here It will be three into d x by x. So d x by x is what? One by one thousand. So three by one thousand. That is, we have to find out the percentage. So delta y by y into hundred. This you can assume it to be multiplication by hundred. So this goes two zeros. Three by ten is zero point three. So point three percent change in the volume will be the result. So how we are going to do this? This is the logic i told you and you have to write it like this exactly like this right the pressure p and the volume v of a gas are connected by the relation pv to the power 1.4 equals to constant 
Find the percentage error in P corresponding to decrease of 1 by 2 percent in V. So you have delta X, delta Y, that is delta X is known, delta Y we have to find out. So what have to be what is to be computed we always assume it to be y so p is y and we know that half percent so we take x as v now let us come to the relationship which is given p v to the power 1.4 is equal to k k is some constant now in order to solve this let us take the log on both the sides log a into b is log a plus log b and log x to the power y is y log x that is what we are going to deal log p 1.4 will come in front log v is going to be on the right it's uh, log k now let us differentiate we always differentiate with the va the value which we know so we are differentiating with respect to x that is v we are differentiating so 1 by p and then dp by dv because p has to be because we are differentiating with respect to v plus 1.4 log v is 1 by v nothing will come here nothing will come here and log k is a constant so the differential will be zero so now bring these dp by p equals when you take it on the right hand side is negative 1.4 by v this dv goes up remember we have to find out dp by p that is dy by y find the percentage error in p corresponding to decrease of half percent in v so the percentage error delta v by v into 100 is already given as half half percent so this dv by v if we multiply both sides by 100 dv by v into 100 is half and on the left you will get the percentage change in the pressure this hole is going to be half this one and since it is decreasing see it is the answer to be positive we have to write negative in place of decrease so you have minus 1.4 into minus half let us multiply this minus minus become plus 1.4 divided by 2 is going to be 0 0.7 so dp by p into 100 is 0 0.7 basically it's the delta y by y into 100 only because delta x by x into 100 is given as negative half half percent and how are you going to do this let me just clean it up so that you actually see how you have to write because my handwriting is real good you have to follow these instructions and you have to write everything in language the height of a cone increased by k percent it's semi vertical angle remaining the same so semi vertical angle when it remains the same there are things which we have to understand here this is a triangle and the angle which i'm talking about is this one you have height slant height and the radius so when the angle remains the same the ratio in which the height and radius and slant slant height will increase or decrease will be equal that is delta h by h in 200 that is the percentage change in the height will be equal to the percentage change in the radius will be equal to the percentage change in the slant height so delta l by l into 100 is equal to delta r by r into 100 okay F this is the very important part of this question let us assume it to be some k now the height of the cone increases by k percent so you can assume k as some c or something right now this is the t t is the total surface area these are the two uh, areas you have to add pi r l is the total one and the the around one and the base one is pi r square so dt by dr is pi and r dl by i'm using the product rule for r and l so r dl by dr plus l we are differentiating with respect to r so it will vanish and this becomes 2 pi r because r square differentiation is 2 r 2 pi r so what do we get now this uh, pi r dl by dr plus pi l plus 2 pi r now you already know dl is d is delta l dr is delta r and that is equal to the ratio of l by r so delta d and l they are all equi can be equated and change interchangeably so pi r here i'm writing l by r plus pi l plus 2 pi r you can cancel these two pi l plus pi l is 2 pi l so this is 2 pi l you have 2 pi r here so 2 pi l plus r is dt by dr now dt here and dr this dt by dr we have got i'm taking dr on the right hand side now dividing it by t that is the total surface area you can divide this pi r if you take this pi r common you get pi r l plus r so you have pi r l plus r and now you have uh, this uh, see there is a r i'm bringing it down with your dr by r so i'm just re uh, removing it 
dr bar l plus r l plus r cancel pi pi gets cancel so finally you get dt by t if you multiply by 100 also dt by t into 100 is e is equal to twice of this is twice of percentage of percentage change in sur total surface area is in, the, is in the left 2 dr by r is what in place of dr by r as i the first thing i told you so you can replace it by delta h by h into 100 all right so delta h by h in by into 100 can be easily replaced by dr by r into 100 so you have k percent as the answer here k percent so this k multiplied by 2 2 k is the final answer so the percentage increase in the total surface area is 2 k percent so let me just show you how we have done this this is the total thing okay i explained you how i approached it but you have to write it like this now same thing will be done with the volume so volume is what 1 by 3 pi r square h this is the volume so dv by dh is 1 by 3 pi now by product rule let us differentiate it r square then differentiation of h is h then h differentiation of r square is 2r dr by dh i told you dr by d this dr by dh can be written as r by h so just write r by h in this case h h gets cancelled you have 2 r square here 2 r square plus r square is 3 r square so you have 3 r square into pi by 3 3 3 gets cancelled d v by dh is simply pi r square s this is dv by dh is pi r square now take this dh on the right hand side so you get dv as pi r square into dh now just make it the way we are fond of making it as a percentage error dv by v so you have to multiply v if you are multiplying v here or dividing v here you have to have a v here also and then you have to have a h so you have to have an h in the numerator also that is because we want dh by h so a h, h has to be in the numerator also okay so pi r square h in the numerator and volume is 4 by 3 pi r uh, 1 by 3 pi r square h so we have dh by h h so this pi r square h pi r square h cancel this 3 goes up so you have 3 dh by h so dv by v is 3 dh by h multiply both sides by 100 this is delta v only this is delta h only okay let's multiply it by 100 so you get thrice of it and you already know delta h by h into 100 is already given in the question as k percent so you can just take this 3 3k percent is the answer the percentage increase in the volume of cone is 3k percent show that the relative error in computing the volume of a sphere due to an error in measuring the radius this is we are talking about is approximately equal to three times the relative error in the radius so the previous question was quite tricky but this is quite easy if you have done that it will be easier for you v volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube i am taking radius as x and what we don't know v so we take v as y finally you can write it as y equals 4 by 3 pi x cube now just differentiate dy by dx is 4 by 3 pi this is 3x square and you can cancel this 4 pi x square this is dx bringing on it on the right hand side so we have dy now this dy is delta y this is 4 pi x square dx is delta x now divided by x into 100 so you have to have x in the numerator also you are in see i have introduced an x in the denominator so i have to multiply x in the numerator delta by x by x into 100 so if you have multiplied 100 here you have to multiply 100 on the left hand side also and as i have hex in the new denominator i have have to have a x in the numerator here also if we have y in the denominator you have to have the y in the right hand side also but y is v is what y is what it is 4 by 3 pi x cube okay this is volume only y was volume only now you can just cancel things out you get 3 in the new denominator you it goes up because it is a reciprocal so y percent is equal to thrice of x percent because delta x by x into 100 is x percent so you can just write it as y percent is equal to three times x percent this is the answer okay they wanted to prove we proved it using differential find the approximate value of the following now there are many questions many questions like this which are following so the concept or the way the process to do it let us understand it very carefully so that the next questions are easier now when you have a function like this y is equal to under root x this is a kind of question we have so fx is y equals fx now what is x here the main thing is x so x has to be taken such that it has a 
proper root that is x we take 25 so the extra this 0 0.02 is what this extra 0 0.02 is the delta x or a slight value which has been added to the value actual value 25 so that you get the proper 25.02 so x plus delta x is equal to 25.02 now in order to get this x plus delta x and we need y plus delta y that is the whole uh, answer we want. So we will take x as uh, 25. The root of 25 is 5. Now y is 5 at x equals to 25. So I already told you dx and delta x they will be used interchangeably so that is true with the del dy equals to delta y also. Now coming to the function y equals under root x. Let us differentiate it. So dy by dx is going to be 1 by 2 under root x. You know how to do this. How, how we are going to do this? We assume it to be the power of half, then nx to the power n minus 1. This 1 by 2 is in the denominator. x to the power minus half goes down x to the power half that is under root x. 1 by twice under root x. So this dy by dx, we have to find out the value at x equals to 25 here. So dy by dx at x equals to 25 is what? x is 25. So 1 by twice of under root 25. 1 by twice of under root 25. Under root 25, you know, it is 5. So 1 by 2 into 5, that is 1 by 10. So this is your dy by dx at x equals to 25. Now delta y by delta x equals to dy by dx equals to 1 by 10. All right. dy by dx and delta y by delta x they we equate that is how we get delta y we multiply dy by dx with delta x and when we multiply this you get the proper value so dy by dx this x x at 25 dy by dx is already known to us it is 1 by 10 so in order to find the final value which is the delta y we have to multiply this with delta x now find out where is delta x delta x we have already computed remember it's 0 0.02 so when you multiply 1 by 10 with 0 0.02, it is 2 by 100 divided by 10. So it will be 0 0.002. Now this is delta y. So under root 25.02 is nothing but y plus delta y. y plus delta y is what? Delta y is 0 .0, 0 0.002. And y already we computed at x, x equals to 25. It is 5. So 5 plus 0 0.002 is 5.002. That is your y plus delta y for x plus delta x which is 25.02 when you root the use the uh, root function. So these are uh, and we are going to skip those which are uh, similar but this is a different kind of question. So y equals to cube root of x cube root is to the power 1 by 3. So in the in the value of x we have to take that value for which we get a cube root. So if we take x as 0 0.008 then we can get the 1 by 3rd of it that is to the power 1 by 3rd so x plus delta x is 0 0.009 so delta x will be equal to 0 0.008 minus 0 0.001 that is means if you subtract this you are going to get 0 0.001 that is delta x now y is cube root of x so 0 0.008 that is how we get the value of y so you can just write it as 8 divided by 1000 cube root is what 8 is 2 cube and this is this is 10 cube and cube root you can just cancel these three powers so 2 by 10 that is 0 0.2 it will be so at y at x equals to 0, 0, 0 0.008 y gets the value of 0 0.2 which we are going to use delta x is already we have computed 0 0.001 now coming to differentiation y equals to third root of under root x so we have x to the power 1 by 3 so dy by dx is equal to 1 by 3 x to the power 1 by 3 minus 1 that is minus 2 by 3 it will come so it will be x to the power minus 2 by 3 so 1 by 3 this x to the power 2 by 3 now we have to find out this at x equals to whichever value we have taken what is x 0 0.008 so this value has to be computed for x equal to 0, 0 0.008 and we have already taken the uh, one third root because x to the power 2 by 3 is x to the power 1 by 3 multiplied by x 2 so x equals to 0 0.008 we will find out it is 0 0.008 to the power 2 by 3 and this 0 0.008 we already know 1 by third we have computed it is 0 0.2 so essentially it is 0 0.2 to the power square because 0 0.008 to the power 1 by 3 we have all already computed that is 0 0.2 and now 0 0.2 square is 0 0.04 so now you can write it as 0 0.4, 0 0.04 and 3 if you multiply it will be 0 0.12. So it will be dy by dx at x equals to 0 0.008 is 1 by 0 0.12. This is 1 by 0 0.12. 
Now delta y will be dy by dx into delta x. What is dy by dx? 0 0.12, 1 by 0 0.12, we have already computed that. And delta x is already known to us, that is 0 0.001. So 1 by 0 0.12 into delta x, that is 0 0.001. So this is going to be, see 12 in the denominator, 100 goes up. This is 1 by 1, 2, 3, this cancels. So 1 by 120 will come. This is your delta y. Now we, we have not completed yet because we have to find out y plus delta y. Because x plus delta x was uh, our value and for x plus delta x, what will be the y plus delta y? So now we have just computed delta y, we have to add a y with it. And you already know y add this value. Uh, x equals to 0 0.008 we have already computed that so delta y was 1 by 120 and uh, if you compute this it is going to be 0 0.008 triple 3 so y plus delta y is going to be 0 0.008333 plus and y is 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.2 from here when you add this you're going to get 0 0.208 triple 3 this is your final answer so this is 0 0.009 to the power 1 by 3 is this value 0 0.007 to the power 1 by 3 now the value has to be taken so that you get the power of 1 by 3 means you get a proper value out of it so for that you have fx equals y equals cube root of x so we will take some x value so that you get a proper cube root and you know that 0 0.008 from the previous question also we have taken x as this now x plus delta x is your 0 0.007 that is the actual value this is the actual value given in the question so in order to find out delta x you have to subtract this is 0 0.007 so 0 0.007 minus 0 0.008 is going to be minus 0 0.001 this is your delta x now y is cube root of x x is 0 0.008 so we have just completed this in the previous question y is equal to 0 0.2 delta x is going to be equal to minus negative 0 0.001 now let us differentiate so dy dy by dx is equal to 1 by 3 x to the power 2 by 3 we have just done a question like this remember and what is the value of uh, dy by dx at x equals to 0 0.208 so this was 0 0.004 and you have 3 multiplied so it is same as the previous one 0 0.12 it is so 0 0.1 by 0 0.12 so delta y is equal to dy by dx into delta x dy by dx is 1 by 0 0.12 and dx was 0 0.001 and please remember it is in negative because we are going to add y plus delta y and when we add y plus delta y it's 0 0.001 with a negative sign so you have zero this has 1 by 0 0.12 as divided by dx we have already computed that just write that here so 1 by 0 0.12 into 0 0.001 so you get this as three zeros here you have two zeros see almost similar the previous question you you know that it is going to come as 1 by 120 now delta y is this now you have to do y plus delta y and uh, 1 by 120 was 0 0.008333 y plus delta y what was y 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 and this is a negative please remember so you have to subtract this y plus delta y is actually y minus delta y in this case so 0 0.2 minus 0 0.0 0 0 0.008333 3. so that is going to be 0 0.191667 this is y plus delta y or you can say 0 0.007 to the power 1 by 3 is this one under root 401 so this is y equals under root 401 and this 401 we need some some value so that we get a proper root and that is going to be 400 so we'll take x as 400 what will be x plus delta x x plus delta x is 401 so delta x is what 401 minus 400 that is going to be 1 when you subtract this these two you get 1 so this is y under root 400 400 is 20 20 into 20 is 400 so y you get 20 delta x you get 1 now let us come to our function y is under root x so dy by dx is going to be 1 by twice under root x so dy by dx at x equals to 400 which you have assumed is 1 by twice under root 400 under root 400 is 20 so 1 by 2 into 20 so 1 by 40 it will so delta y will be equal to dy by dx into delta x or dx dy by dx is 1 by 40 and delta x was 1 so you get 1 by 40 that is going to be 0 0.025 now y plus delta y you need y was already computed it is 20 and this this delta y was 0 0.025 so when you add this 20 with 0 0.025 you get under root 401 as 20.025 so this is a similar question with the root 
in it. 15 raised to the power 1 by 4. So again, you have to choose certain values so that you get a proper 1 by 4th power. So that is going to be 16. That is 16. So y equals 15 to the power 1 by 4. So x is 16 we can take. Because anything you take x should have 1 to the power means raised to the power 1 by 4 as a proper value. It should return a proper value. When you take 16, it is 2 to the power 4. 2 to the 4, 4 to the 8, 8 to the 16. So 2 raised 4 you can take. x as 16 you will take. Alright. x plus delta x is going to be this is 15 minus 16 because delta x you have 15 you have assumed x has 16 so it is going to be minus what is y value at this under root of 16 it's 2 so we have delta x we have y equals 2 now coming to the function which is y equals x to the power 1 by 4 so dy by dx is going to be 1 by 4 x to the power 1 by 4 minus 1 that is it is going to be 1 minus 4 by 4 minus 3 by 4 so 1 by 4 x to the power 3 by 4 because it is negative in the numerator positive in the denominator so 16 to the power 3 by 4 so it is nothing but 16 to the power 1 by 4 to the power 3 and 16 to the power 1 by 4 is nothing but 2 2 to the power 3 is 8. So you get an 8 here. And there is already a 4 in the denominator. So 8 for the 32. So dy by dx at x equals to 16 is nothing but 8 for the 32. That is 1 by 32. Now delta y is dy by dx into delta x. So this is 1 by 32. Delta x is negative 1. So you get minus 1 by 32. And that is going to come as minus 0.03125. This is your delta y. Now y plus delta y has to be computed. You already have a y which is 2. You already have a delta y which is negative 0.03125. So it's a subtraction actually in order to find out 15 to the power 1 by 4. So you have 2 minus 0.03125. So you have delta y plus y that is 15 to the power 1 by 4 is 1.96875. Now we have 1 by 2.002 to the power square. So the function here is 1 by x square. This is the function we are dealing with. So x will take as certain value so that you get a proper result. So x is 2, x plus delta x is 2.002. So when you subtract this, it is going to be minus no plus 0 0.002. And what is the value of y at x equals to this value? 2. So 1 by 4, y is 1 by 4, that is 0 0.25, y is 0 0.25. So you have a value of y, you have a value of delta x. Now the next thing is to differentiate this function. dy by dx is going to be equal to x, x to the power minus 2, so you get minus 2, x to the power minus 2, minus 1, minus 3. So minus 2, 1 by x, q. Now we have to compute this dy by dx at x equals to 2. We have a differentiated function which is minus 2 by x cube in place of x replace it by 2 so you get 2 cube 1 2 you can cancel it will be negative 1 by 4 so minus 1 by 4 again it is minus 0 0.25 only so we have delta y is dy by dx into delta x dy by dx is dy by dx is what minus 0 0.25 Delta x is 0 0.002. It is in negative. Please remember. So it is 25 by 100 divided by uh, multiplied by 2 by 1000. So 50 divided by 5 zeros. 5 zeros. So 1 zero can be cancelled. So you get 5 by 4 zeros. So it is going to be 0 0.0005. 5 has the denominator as 10 to the power 4. That is 1, 2, 3, 4. So just put a dot decimal and then compute 4 values 0 0 0 then 5 so zero, it's not 0 0.005 it's minus 0 0.0005 three zeros preceding 5 okay so we have now the delta y we have the y we can compute y plus delta y so y plus delta y is nothing but addition of these two that is 0 0.25 plus minus 0 0.0005 so when you add these two you are going to get 0 0.2495 i am saying we have y as 0 0.25 a delta y is this value 0 0.0005 when you subtract this this is going to be 0 0.2495 this is your final using differential find the approximate value of log 4.04 basis e it is given that these two values so log 4 and log e base to the 10 the values are being provided so how do we proceed it 
we have to know the value of log for which we can get certain proper value. By saying that, I mean 4.04x can be assumed as 4 and delta x can be taken as 0.04. So if you assumed x equals to 4, x plus delta x is 4.04. So this delta x is going to be equal to 4.04 minus 4 and that is going to be 0.04 all right so we have the value of x we have the value of delta x and the function is y equals log x but remember it is base e so we have log base e now the function y at value 4 what will be the value because we have to find out the value of y at the value which we have assumed so it will be log the if you want to remove e then it has to be log you can take any base here we are taking 10 base 4 goes up, E goes down. Now these two values are already being provided to us. That means we have 0.6021 divided by 0.4343. So that is 1.386368. Now Y is also known. Let us differentiate now. Y equals to log X. We have the value of Y. We have the value of delta X. The differentiation of y equals log x is dy by dx is equal to log x is 1 by x and we have to find out the value of dy by dx at x which we have assumed that is 4. So 1 by 4 it will be. Delta y is what? We know already it, it has to be dy by dx into delta x dx or delta x. dy by dx is known to us now 1 by 4. Delta x we have already known initially 0 0.04 so when it cancels it will be 0 0.01 this is delta y but the whole value is not delta y it's y plus delta y so log 4.04 log base e 4.404 is nothing but y plus delta y so you have to add these two so 1.38638 plus 0 0.01 and that is 1.396368 y plus delta y using differential find the approximate value of log this uh, i hope you'll be able to do we have just done a question like this we have just completed a question like this right so this is also uh, similar to this one which we have already done now we have certain degree question here so we'll attempt it find the approximate value of cos 61 it is given that sin 60 is this and one degree is this much radian so we know value of cos 60 we know 60 90 these values are known to us we have been going through this all through this uh, juncture means previous classes also so one degree is this much radian same thing we have to do which the approach will remain same the function is here cos so y is equal to cos x please remember it is in degree so x you can take as 60 degree actually it's given 61 x we will take as 60 so delta x will be what one degree that is the extra 2ab is one degree so x delta x is 61 minus 60 that is delta x is one degree but in the in the question it's already given it's 0.01745 so one degree is this this much all right now for this 60 degree you have to find the value of y first because we need to know the value of x which we have chosen what is the value of corresponding y so this is cos 60 so it is half which is 0 0.5 in this case delta x is known now y is also known so y is cos x let us differentiate it dy by dx is cos x is minus sin x now this minus sin x we have to find out the value at x equals to 60 degree so minus sin 60 degree it will be and sin 60 degree also is given in the question it's minus 0 0.86603 so delta y will be dy by dx into delta x dy by dx is known to us minus 0 0.86603 and delta x is what 0 0.01745 so when you multiply this delta y is going to be negative 0 0.01511 so what is y plus delta y then you just have to add this actually you don't have to add this subtract 0 0.5 minus 0 0.01511 it's 0 0.48489 using differential find the approximate value of sine 22 by 14 now 22 by 14 you have to understand this it's 22 by 7 divided by 2 this is pi pi is 22 by 7 we know it by pi we know it by 22 by 7 we know it by 3.14 so it's basically sine pi by 2 value they are asking so you don't have to find out the differential because there is no other thing i'm just saying sine pi by 2 is known to us there is no approximation involved and you'll see the answer we'll do all the process we'll follow the process but you will see that sine of this will be 1 we know sine pi by 2 is 1 anyways when they are asking let's do it x is equal to uh, let us assume x as pi and it's 22 by 7 and delta x is x plus delta x is 22 by 14 we have assumed x as, x as pi we have to do such certain things so it's minus 22 
by 7 22 by 14 minus 22 by 7 so delta x is going to be 22 minus this is going to be 44 minus 22 by 14 it will be now x is equal to pi y is sin x this is our function so as we have assumed x as pi we have to find out the value of y at this x so y is equal to sine pi and you know sine 180 degree is what it's zero is already known to us and then del delta x will be what dx or delta x so we have to find out the value of delta x x is what see delta x in order to find out we have to find out the value of of this this value has to be put in, in sine so in sine you have to put this value delta x what is the value of sine at this as at this delta x so sine minus 22 by 14 and sine minus theta is minus sine theta so essentially minus sine pi by 2 we are doing and that is going to be equal to negative 1 because sine 90 as i told you initially it is 1 negative 1 because my negative is there now let us differentiate y is sine x divided by dx is cos x divided by dx we have to find out it as at x equals to 22 by pi that is 22 by 7 that is cos pi we have to find out this is 22 by 7 is pi only so it is negative 1 cos pi is negative 1 okay now delta y is equal to dy by dx into delta x dy by dx into delta x so dy by dx is what it's negative 1 delta x is what it's 1 negative 1 negative 1 so negative 1 negative negative is positive 1 so y plus delta y is going to be equal to sine 1 since since i <laughs> already told you 0 plus 1 it's going to be coming as 1. So there is no approximation involved. It's just sine 22 by 14 is going to be equal to 1. So I started with that thing and I told you that sine pi by 2 is already known to us and that has come. But since this question has uh, is in this chapter and we have to follow follow certain procedure, we have followed the procedure and proved that it's, it's actually 1. Uh, it's uh, almost like this one, the previous one. So we'll do the step by step uh, process cos is 11 pi by 36 now the main thing will be what we are going to assume as x that is the main thing so there is a certain observation which we can take we know the value of 60 degree we know the value of 90 degree cos sine cos all this but how about trying to find say x as pi by 3 now you will ask the question why we have taken it as pi by 3 what is the reason i'll just tell you first let us do this x plus delta x is 11 pi by 36 Delta x will be 11 pi by 36 minus pi by 3 and that is going to be equal to minus pi by 36. Okay. Because 11 by 36 I can assume it to be say 10 by 30. Okay. So it, it's coming nearer to pi by 3 for which the value is known to us. Okay. If it would have been say 12 by 62. So I, I would have taken pi by 6 as the approximation. I hope you got the idea. That is why pi by 3 is taken as the approximation as the value which we know it. So that we can compute it later on. Now 11 by 11 pi by 36 minus pi by 3. This is going to be equal to negative 3 pi divided by 3 into 36. 3 3 gets cancelled. Minus pi by 36 it is. Now in order to find out the degree. Just multiply it by 180 by pi. So pi pi gets cancelled. 36 5 is a 180. So it's negative 5. So delta x is your negative 5 degree. Now x is pi by 3. What is the value of y at this value? So cos pi by 3. Cos pi by 3 is what? It is half. If you multiply it by 180 by pi, you will know it. It is 60 degree. So we have half 0 0.5. Now in order to find out dx or delta x, this is going to be equal to because you have to find out the value of, of 5 degree for sine. In the previous question, I told you that delta x the value of delta x has to be put in in this sign so that we get the value of delta x so this is so dy by dx let us assume this first dy by dx as cos x okay y is, y is cos x and when we find out uh, dy by dx it is negative sin x so minus sin x so it's dy by dx x equals to pi by 3 it's minus sin pi by 3 and minus sin pi by 3 is what it's root 3 by 2 so it will be minus 0 0.86603 now dy by dx is known delta x is in order to find out delta y it has to be dy by dx into delta x dy by dx is known to us now we need the dx or delta x value so the corresponding change in x for the corresponding change in y because delta x is now minus 5 degree but what is the value of this minus 5 degree when you use the sine so sine minus 5 degree has to be computed here all right so it is going to be minus minus sine 5 degree it's going to come as minus 0 0.08716 and this sine 5 degree is not known to us i'm just saying the question has to give us this value since the question is not giving i am telling you but the question would have would have to have this value because sine phi is essentially going to come so now let us put the value we have minus 0 0.86603 multiplied by minus 0 0.08716 
six and that is going to be zero point zero seven five five seven five. That is your delta y. But you have to add y with it. Y was already there. It was point five. So point five plus this value. Is the final value, so which is going to come as because cos divided pi by thirty six is so. Let us add this zero point five seven five five seven five. All right, okay. 80, 80, 1 by 4. This we have already done this kind of question. Okay, to the power 1 by 3 also being taken. Just uh, x has to be taken as 27 because it has a proper cube root. The process you already know. 66 again. 64 is the value which we are interested in. Here also under root 26, 25 you have to take it as x. The next process you know already. Under root 37 also you can do. It's simply 36 x. As to be thirty six, and this is under root zero point four eight point four nine. You have to take as x. Other things you know already. Eighty two to the power one by four. You know eighty one. Eighty one has the fourth root. It's three. Seventeen by eighty one to the power one by four. Now since we have skipped various. uh questions just now, so let us do this one. So those who don't understand uh, up till now or. They want to understand how to do all these questions we skipped. Let us do this one. So this is y is equal to f x. The function is x to the power one by four. That is our question. So what we are going to do? We'll take x certain way so that we get a fourth row. So two to the power four is sixteen. So we'll take sixteen as this one, the numerator and denominator also three to the power four is eighty one. Three into three into three into three. That is eighty one. So we can take this is sixteen by eighty one as x. So what is x plus delta x then? Means we have to find out delta x then. So seventeen by eighty one minus delta x has to be minus sixteen by eighty one. So seventeen minus sixteen is one, and denominator is same. So it is going to come as one by eighty one. So this is your delta x. Now what is the value of corresponding y? So we have assumed sixteen by eighty one as x. So y is equal to sixteen by eighteen to the power one by four. It's going to be two to the power four, three to the power four, one by four, four four gets cancelled. You get two by three. This is your y. Now delta x is what? Delta x or dx. This is going to be equal to one by eighty one. That's that's that we have already got. Delta x we know value of y. Also we know at this x value. So dy by dx. Dy by dx differentiation we are doing. One by four x to the power one by four minus one. So one by four that is x to the power minus three by four will come in the numerator. Three by four in the denominator. So it's x at x equals to. Sixteen by eighty one. You have to find out one by four. We have sixteen by eighty one to the power one by four to the power three. Sixteen by eighty one. We have just computed. It's two by three. So there is, has to be a power cube for two by three. So it's going to be eight by twenty seven. I'm saying two by three to the to the power three is numerator is two to the power three. That is eight. Denominator three to the power three is twenty seven. So one by four. And here you get eight by twenty seven. This goes up twenty seven. Thirty uh, two comes in the denominator. So y at s at this x is twenty seven by thirty two. Now delta y is what divided by dx into delta x. We have just computed divided by dx as twenty seven by thirty two. So twenty seven by thirty two is divided by dx and dx is one by eighty one as we have computed just now. So when you solve it, it is going to come as one by ninety six. And when you divide it properly, one by ninety six, it's going to be equal to zero point zero one zero four two. So delta y is this value. One by ninety six is simply in In decimals, it will be zero point zero one zero four two. That's delta or delta y. We have to add y with it. Y is what one by eighty one. Okay, this uh, y plus delta y. So delta y is known to us, and y is what one by eighty one. So when you divide this, so oh, y is two by three. Sorry, sorry, it's two by three. So it's point six seven seven one. Okay, this is thirty three to the power one by five. Thirty two is two to the power five. So you can do it by yourself. Uh, this also. Under root thirty six point six, that also can be done by you because we have done question like this twenty five to the power one by three. Under root forty nine point five, this also you can do three point nine six eight to the power three by two. Okay, this also you can do. Okay, it's it's quite easy. Ah, uh, but let's 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 do it for the sake of completion. Y is equal to f x x to the power three by two. So we have to take certain x so that you get three by two power. That is. Three is the power, but one by two is the root. So when you take x as four, four to the power three by two is what? Two square, two two gets cancelled. You get two to the power three, that is eight. So for x equals to four, x plus delta x is what? It's in actual question three point nine six eight. So delta x is going to be three point nine six eight minus four, that is minus zero point zero three two. So y add this x to the power three by two. So we have already computed that at four to the power three by two, and that that has come already as eight. So you have delta x, you have y. Now this function is y to the y is x raised three by two. 
dy by dx is 3 by 2 x to the power 3 by 2 minus 1. 3 by 2 x to the power this is going to be equal to 1 by 2. So it's simply root x. Okay. X to the power 1 by 2 it is going to come. So 3 by 2 root x and this has to be computed at value of x which we have assumed. X is 4. So 3 by 2 and root of 4 is 2. So it's going to come as 3. So delta y will be equal to dy by dx into delta x. dy by dx is 3. Just compute it. And delta x already taken 0 0.32. So just add these two. Actually you have to multiply these two. 3 into minus 0 0.32 that is minus 0 0.096. That is delta y. Now you have to add this y plus delta y. Alright. You have y also. You have delta y also now. Just add these two. So that is you have 8. Y was 8. We have already computed that. Y it's plus delta y. But since delta y is in negative. So 8 minus 0 0.096 is 7.904. That's your final answer. Okay. This also question can be done by uh, yourself. This also. Find the approximate value of f 2.01 where this function is. 4x square plus 5x plus 2. So we can generally uh, by previous experience say that this 2 can be taken as x and the other part after the decimal can be taken as the delta x. So x is 2. So let us take x as 2 and you know that delta x is going to be 0 0.01. So x plus delta x is total value 2.01. So in order to find out this delta x let us subtract this. So 0 0.01 is your delta x. The function we already have. 4x square plus 5x plus 2. First, we have to find out the value of y at the value of x you have assumed. So, this is 2. So, 4 into 2 square plus 5 into 2 plus 2. That gives you, this is 2 to the 4, 4 fours are 16, plus 5 to the 10 plus 2. So, it's going to be 28. This is the value of this function at x equals to 2. Then, we have to differentiate this. So, let us differentiate. We have dy by dx. So, this will be 4x square is 2x. And then we have plus 5 and this 2 will be 0. So 8x plus 5 it is. dy by dx is 8x plus 5. And dy by dx, we always find out the value at x, assumed value. x is 2. So 8 into 2 plus 5, it is a 16 plus 5. And that is 21. Okay. Now we have dy by dx. We have delta x. We can find out the value of delta y by dy by dx into delta x. So dy by dx is 21. Delta x is 0 0.01. So it's going to be 0 0.21. Now the value this y plus delta y. So delta y is already known to us now. And a y we previously computed. What was y? Because this is 28. 28 plus 0 0.21 is 28.21. That is your answer. Find the approximate value of f 5.001 where fx is this. So we can take x as 5. fx is the function x cube minus 7x square plus 15. So we have x as x plus delta x is 5.001. Delta x is, take it here. So it is going to be 0 0.001. This is your delta x. Now we have to find out the value of function that is y for the assumed value which is 5. So y is fx. We have to find out f5. So we'll put the value of 5 in place of x. So it will be 5 cube minus 7 into 5 square plus 15. So this is 5 into 5 into 5, 125. 5 5 is 25, 7, 7 into 25 plus 15. So before that, let us do dy by dx. It is 3x square minus 14x. And this also has to be computed at assumed value which is 5. So 3 into 5 square minus 14 into 5 it is. So we have two values. The reference also I have to show you so that you know how to write it. So this is going to be 125 minus 175 plus 15 because 25 into 7 is 175. And when you compute this, this is going to be negative 35. Here you have 3 into 5 square minus 14 into 5. That gives you 75 minus 70. So it is 5. So we need to multiply this uh, dy by dx by delta x in order to get delta y. So this is 5 and dy by dx also is known to us and Delta x is also known to us, 0.001. 5 multiplied by 0.001 is 0.005. So y plus delta y is what? Delta y is 0.005. Y we have already computed initially. That's good. That was negative 35. So 0.05 minus 35. That is minus 34.995. This is your final answer. Find the approximate value of log base 10 100, 1005 given that log base 10 e is 0.4343. So this kind of question we have already done and we know that 1000 can be taken as x. 
so that delta x is 5 that is x plus delta x is total value is 1005 so delta x is going to be we subtract this is going to be 5. Now we have a function which is log and the base is 10. Please remember in order to differentiate we need to get this in base e. So y is fx which is log base 10 x. So this log base 10 x x is equal to 1000 that we assume. So y will be equal to log base 10 1000. So this is nothing but 10 to the power 3. 3 comes in the front log base 10 10 is 1. So y is 3 for the assumed value 1000. Then y is equal to log x is the function. The base is 10. So we will differentiate it. But before that it's log x divided by log 10. The base is e. When you convert it to a common base. This is how we do it. Now log base 10 e is given. But log e base 10 we have in the denominator. So if I write this like this. It will be untrue. Alright. So differentiation of log x will be 1 by x only. But the denominator log base e10 is equal to 1 by log base 10 e. So this is the reciprocal. I am saying log e base 10 is 1 by log 10 log base 10 e. So this content is going to go up. So we have 0 0.4343 divided by x. So divide by dx at x equals to what? 1000. So at value 1000 is going to be 0 0.4343 divided by 1000. So that will increase three zeros up. Like 0 0.0004343. Now delta y is dy by dx into delta x. So dy by dx is this one. It's 0 0.0004343 and delta x is what? It's 5. Reply it by 5. So you have y plus delta y which is 0 0.0021715. This is just delta y. We have to add y in order to get the final value. So log base 10. Uh, I have written base e but it is base 10 actually. So log base 10 1005 is just addition of these two. That will give you 3.0021715. If the radius of a sphere is measured as 9 cm with an error of 0.003 meter. Find the approximate error in calculating its surface area. So we have uh, done question like this in the earlier discussion. You know the volume, you know the surface area. The question is talking about the surface area. So we are going to employ a surface area 4 pi r square. Now the radius of the sphere is measured 9 cm and the error is also given 0 0.03. So x is x is radius which is 9 cm and what is the delta x that is the error is 0 0.03. Now this this x plus delta x let us add this but centimeter meter cannot be added. So we have to convert this meter into centimeter. So multiply it by 100 you get 3 cm. So x plus delta x is 9 plus 3 that is 12 centimeters. So surface area is what? Uh, we are not calling it as surface area. We will call it as y. y is 4 pi. We have taken radius as x. So 4 pi x squared it will be. So we have uh, first we will find out the value uh, at x equals to 9. So at x equals to 9 y will be 4 pi into 9 square. So 9 is 81. 81 into 4 is 324. 324 pi it will be. Then we have the differentiation. We have to differentiate it. dy by dx will be 4 pi. This will be 2x. So 8 pi x. dy by dx is 8 pi x. So we have to find out dy by dx at x equals to 9. So this is going to be 8 into pi into 9. That is going to be 72 pi. And now we have this uh, dy by dx at x equals to 9. We have y. We have delta x. Now we are ready for the delta y. Delta y is dy by dx into delta x dy by dx is 72 pi and delta x initially i showed you it's 3 so it will be 216 pi centimeter square so y plus delta y is not being asked here it is just the approximate error approximate error for corresponding delta x is delta y so corresponding change in radius or error in radius will give you this much error in the surface area. Find the approximate change in the surface area of a cube of side x meters caused by decreasing the side by 1%. So cube is a shape. All of the edges are equal. Everything is equal. Even the opposite sides are having same uh, dimensions. So this face x into x. x is x into x is the area of one face. There are six faces here. This, this one, this one, that one and opposite to that one. So you have 6x square. 6x square is the surface area. Let us call it as y. y is 6x square. 
Now the question is saying that the side is decreased by 1%. So the percentage error is given. 1% is percentage error. So that is delta x by x into 100. Let me write it that delta x by x into 100 is, giving, is given as 1. So surface area, I am saying it is y. Divide by dx cut computation will be 6 and this is 2x or 12x. So divide by dx is 12x. Then delta y is going to be divide by dx into delta x. So divide by dx is what? It's 12x. We have already computed that. And delta x from here, x goes up, 100 goes down. So we have 0.01x multiplied by 12x, which is divided by dx. When you multiply this, it's going to be 0.12x square. And since the edge is given in meter, we'll write the answer in meter square. So the approximate change in the surface area of the cube is 0.12 x square meter square. So this is the change in uh, cube side representing the change in or decrement or increment in the size of the cube. If radius of a sphere is measured as 7 meter with an error of 0.0, .0 meter, find the approximate error in calculating its volume. So volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube. So I am calling radius as x now. So 4 pi x cube it will be. Radius of a sphere is measured as 7 meter with an approximate error of this. So x is 7. Now the error is 0 0.02 meter. So delta x is 0 0.02 meter. Volume we already have. Call it as y. Now dy by dx is simply 4 pi x square. We already done this numerous times. So it's 4 pi x square. Now the time is to compute dy by dx at x equals to the value being given. That is 7. So 4 into pi into 7 into 7. 7 square. That is 196 pi. Now we have this dy by dx. Delta y is what? dy by dx into delta x divided by dx is 196 pi. Delta x is what? 0 0.02. When you multiply this, you are going to get it as 3.92 pi. This is pi meter cube. Find the approximate change in the value v of a cube of side x meters caused by increasing the side by 1%. So this is v. Volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube. You already know that for, for sphere etc. But volume for a cube is x cube. Always it will be in cube, whichever volume you take. So delta x by x into 100 in this case of cube is given as 1. So delta x will be x by 100 that is 0.01x. Now let us differentiate this volume. When you differentiate dv by dx it is going to be 3x squared. So delta y is equal to dy by dx into delta x. dy by dx is 3x squared and this delta x is 0.01x. So we'll get 0.03x cube and what is the dimension meters in meters. So just call it as meter cube. This is data y. Okay, this is all about this exercise. Thank you so much and take care of yourself.